What is up, YouTube? Welcome to Panfro Games. And in today's video, we're gonna be covering some beginner tips for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. This video is gonna be great for any new players to Gen 4, new Pokemon players in general, or people who just want a nice little refresher. And guys, if you do enjoy this video, please like this video and subscribe if you're new, and I really appreciate it. So my first major tip to you here is, when you first start the game, go to your options menu. You have this immediately when you start the game and change your text speed to fast. And this is just gonna save you so much time. The text in this game is very slow. As you can see, it's very fast up in here and you don't really need to worry about anything else. Unless you don't wanna have auto save on. So auto save, I turned off personally because I am someone who likes to, you know, walk up to a Pokemon, see if I can reset for a shiny, see if I can reset for a nature in all possibilities. So if you're trying to reset for natures or shinies, I would have autosave turned off, but if you're just a casual player, you can just keep it on. That works out well for you too. Since I did mention shiny hunting, I do want to bring up that you can shiny hunt for the start at the beginning of the game. However, there is no way to soft reset. The only way to reset would be to turn off the game completely and then load it up again. So that can take a lot of time to get a shiny starter. Personally, for me, it didn't really matter. Good to know that you can catch the starters in the post game. So don't worry about it here in the beginning. If you just want to have a good time and enjoy the game, don't worry about it now. I want to bring attention to my current team. So I am at the second gym area right now. And my best Pokemon is at the same level of the gym leader's best Pokemon, level 22. So experience share has not been too overpowering. I'm not way over leveled. I'm right at the level. And I've really just been doing every single trainer battle in the game. And I've been catching every single Pokemon that I do not have in my decks already. So there's a little bit of grinding involved in that a tiny bit, which is great. The EXP share, in my opinion, does not make the game too easy. And so if you just want to have a great time and just play the game, just battle all the trainers, catch some Pokemon here and there, and you'll be on par with the trainers, at least for gyms one to eight. And speaking about my party, a good idea if you're new to Pokemon and you don't know this, some Pokemon have the ability called Pickup, which Pachirisu does, which you can get on very early in the game. And Pickup allows a Pokemon to pick up a random item while they're in the area. And it's pretty great overall as an ability as this allows you to get some items that can sell for a lot of value, items that you may not be able to buy yet, or even some evolutionary stones that you won't be able to get in the post game. I always recommend if you have an extra spot in your team, just have a Pokemon pick up and then check every now and then is and see if they have an item and then take the item off and then start it all over again. One major note, TMs have a limited use in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. This is different than how it was in Sword and Shield where those there were unlimited TMs. They did at least remove HMs, but now they made the HMs into TMs and you don't actually need to use the HMs anymore to transverse the environment because you'll just have wild Pokemon do that stuff for you, which you get on very early in the game. However, if you wanna have like all your Pokemon no Earthquake, you're gonna have to have six Earthquake TMs. So that is unfortunate and that is a change I don't like overall. However, you can buy more TMs in the game. You can buy them in different shops throughout the game while you're going through the main story. You can also buy them in the Grand Underground from different vendors, and in the post game, we'll have the best TMs overall. You can also register your items for ease of use. So we had a couple of key items that I would be using. So an old rod is great and a spray duck so I can water my plants. And in order to do this, you just gotta hit a favorite on it, and then you just hit the plus button, and the plus button will now bring up this d-pad looking thing so can't use the spray duck here but i can use the old rod here and you can pick up the old rod right in the first city as well so once you get to the first major town you can get an old rod and hope for some magic carb action a couple of quick notes if you are hatching eggs and you're playing brilliant diamond the only pokemon that has flame body will be caught in the post game for you there is no flame body pokemon in the brilliant diamond main game until you get to the post game pearl does not have this problem because they can use magby as their flame body pokemon and the heart scale vendor only needs to receive 10 heart scales and then his services will be free after the 10th heart scale the most exciting thing about the brilliant diamond and shining pearl remakes is the grand underground and you can access the grand underground before you even go battle the second gym leader so once you reach a turn in the city 
all you have to do next to the Pokemon Center is go into here to talk to the Grand Underground guy. And he will give us a little kit. And with this kit, we'll be able to access the Grand Underground whenever we are in the overworld, which is really convenient. And he's going to show us a nice little tutorial here. All right, so we just go use the Explorer kit. And it's going to take us to the Grand Underground. So the best part about the Grand Underground is Pokemon are super high level in the Grand Underground. For when you get to this city, the Pokemon will be ranging from level 15 to 20. And there's tons of great Pokemon that you can catch in the Grand Underground. The best part about the Grand Underground is that there's a lot of unique Pokemon that you can only catch down here that you have immediate access to. As you can see, we have a Scropey and a Houndoom, which is really awesome that we can catch these like pretty immediately in the game, which is much different than the original uh, Diamond and Pearl games when they released. And these Pokemon are tied to your, certain, your gym badge level, but also what HMs you have on you. So at the beginning, these Pokemon will max out at 20. However, when you get Strength, they'll go up again. When you get Defog, they'll go up again. When you have seven badges, they'll go up again, Waterfall, and then the National Dex. And of course, once you hit those criterias, more and more Pokemon will show up and different Pokemon will show up at certain levels. But the base level, you can straight up catch a Wild Houndoom, which is absolutely incredible. So hey, if you want to go Shiny Hunt a, wow, a Houndoom right in the beginning, or if you really want a cool fire type, well, here you go. You can use a Houndoom, so go for it. I mean, level 19 Houndoom immediately. Like, how awesome is this game? Of course, you can also catch a bunch of other cool Pokemon too. You can catch the babies like Elkid, Togepi, Smoochum, and Magby. You can catch Scyther, you can catch Pinsir, you can catch Absol, you can catch Swablu, Gastrodon, so on and so forth. So always be checking the Grand Underground because there's so much to do here and there's a lot of items you can find and there's a bunch of secrets as well. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you liked it and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out and have a great one.